Hello, welcome to Dare.io DevOps Mentorship Program. If you're watching this video right now, it's either you stumbled into my video on YouTube or you've been to one of my webinars and you probably have signed up to my mentoring program to become a DevOps engineer or, or anything like that. Regardless of how you've come to this video right now, I just want to say congratulations because this is the very beginning of a very interesting and amazing journey to becoming a professional that is practicing DevOps. And in this video, what we're going to be talking about is what is Linux. Like I always say, foundation is what matters, especially with a career like DevOps. You need solid foundation in a number of things and one of them is Linux. Well, before we try to understand exactly what Linux is, the first thing we need to understand is what exactly is an operating system. It's also called an OS. Before I bring up the definition on the screen, I just want to explain to you if you think about a computer system, in a computer system there are hardwares, there are softwares, right? So with hardware we're talking about the keyboard, the monitor, the CPU, the USB device, the, the storage, the mouse, all these hardware, things that you can touch with your hands. The software are those that you can't really touch with your hand, but you can see them on the screen, you can install them. But if you think about it, how do they actually work together? When you have a computer, you can install and you can type on a keyboard and you can see it on your monitor. How does all that tie together? That is what an OS do. The operating system is what sits in between the hardware and the software and make everything just work. Now, let's bring up the definition on the screen. So an operating system is the primary software that manages all the hardware and other software on the computer. The operating system, also known as the OS, interfaces with the computer's hardware and provides services that applications can use. If this is still not very clear to you, hang on to your hat, don't worry, we're just going to go into a little bit more detail. Now at the core of the OS is a software program commonly called the kernel. So you must have heard about kernel, sometimes you hear things like the Linux kernel. Basically that's just the software that does what the OS is meant to do. But what I would like to also talk about is how exactly does the hardware interact with the OS kernel and how does the software interact with the OS kernel as well. So what exactly does an OS do? Number one, an OS is the core set of software on the device that keeps everything together. We've already talked about this. Secondly, it handles everything from your keyboard and mouse, the Wi-Fi radio, storage devices, monitor display and every tiny little detail that makes your computer to function. Number three, the OS uses what we call device drivers. Now this is the point where I wanted to actually talk about how the hardware interacts with the operating system. The manufacturers that create the hardware like keyboard for example, they also create drivers that come with the keyboard. And that's why in some cases when the computer system is misbehaving, maybe you put your USB device in and it's not working properly, you may have heard it but they say things like, oh why don't you just download the latest driver for that USB device, you know, or why don't you remove the driver for that Bluetooth device and reinstall it. Without those drivers that particular hardware is not going to be able to interact with the operating system so it's a software layer on top of the device itself that you're plugging into the computer number four the OS includes software libraries and APIs now this word API or acronym you're gonna be hearing it a lot in your entire DevOps journey and what an API means is it's just a layer that allows a, a particular application to be able to talk to another application so if I write a software now and you write your own software and we want both software to be able to talk to each other then I'm gonna have to create an API that I can use for another software to interact with me the only way I can can also interact with you is if you have an API which is the application programming interface that I can use to talk to you. Another example is your banking system for example. So let's say you have an e-commerce website and you want to be able to take payment and when you take payment certain transaction would have to happen in the account of the person who is making that payment. When that payment is happening maybe you're connecting to payment gateway that is where API comes because then your website 
side is talking to the provider of that service which is the bank to be able to make transactions so remember we talked about the operating system that has its own software which is the kernel now this part number four is where we're talking about the software on the computer how does the software interact with the operating system it does that through the api so the os includes software libraries when uh, any vendor like microsoft when they create a operating system it comes with libraries that allow software to be able to connect to them to be able to call those functions so ever wonder how a software like microsoft word is able to display what you type on the keyboard screen that's the api we're talking about now let's think about it this way you type some alphabet onto your keyboard it triggers the driver that talks to the os and the os is able to interpret what the keyboard is doing now don't forget you're typing this into a microsoft word the microsoft word on the other hand has its own way of communicating with the os apis through the OS APIs, then what you've typed into the keyboard is able to be sent to that Word software and then you're able to see it on the screen. The screen is another hardware that has its own way of communicating with the OS to display it on the screen. So that's how the whole thing connects together. So the operating system basically sits in between the applications you run and the hardware. So using the hardware drivers as the interface between the two. Number five, it also handles multitasking. So allocating hardware resources such as CPU cores and computer RAM memory among multiple running programs. So that's why you can have multiple programs and software installed on your computer and your operating system is able to allocate resources accordingly. So if a particular program needs more CPU resource, then the operating system understands that and it's able to set it to it or in the case of uh, memory. And it does this in a multitasking fashion so generally speaking an OS contains lots and lots of functions in which when called execute instructions that can be interpreted by the hardware's driver so let's talk about the common operating systems you may already know I mentioned Windows already so Microsoft Windows number one number two Linux OS Linux is just an operating system right so that's why it's important before we even talk about Linux we have to first understand what an OS is another os is the apple's mac os and the apple ios on your mobile devices google's android it's another operating system but in this case on the mobile device think about it it's just like another computer so the os is what sits in between all of these things so back to our question what the heck is linux well it's just like microsoft windows android ios or mac os which is now os 10 linux is just another operating system but a free one so guys, there you have it. That is Linux. In the next video, we're actually now going to go deeper into the history of Linux, how Linux even came about before we then start getting into hands-on on how to work on Linux and become a DevOps engineer ultimately. So thank you so much for watching this video and the video, if you like it, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to be notified every time I post new content, always remember to click on the notification button. All right, see you in the next video.